tired of picking up pesky scratches all over your watch? Protect your pride and joy with the Watch Protect Company. You can choose on site from liquid skin or this protective film here. Easy to apply, invisible once fitted, totally removable and completely scratch resistant. Use the code on screen to get a discount. So protect your pride and joy at thewatchprotect.com. Hello and welcome back to TGTV and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Watch Talk. Now, as with all Watch Talk episodes, it is brought to you with Grail Watch Club. Many of you will have heard of Grail Watch Club before, but if you haven't, it is your way to get an incredible watch for a few quid. It is a giveaway business founded by myself and friend James, Mr. No Date, and we give away an incredible watch every single time. In previous episodes, I've tried to time the episode with what we're giving away at that particular time. The tickets sell so quick, I'm not going to bother this time. So right now, on the I'm going to show you what you can win this week for a few quid. You can enter right now and the tickets actually support Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation as well. So you'll be donating to a great cause and also potentially winning a watch. We've tried to make the odds as good as possible. We've tried to balance it between ticket prices and odds. Not only that, I'll be handing over the watch in person to the winner. So it's not scammy. Someone actually wins it and we've given away I think eight or nine watches so far. I remember recently handing over a Starbucks Submariner amongst other things. I'll leave the links below to that. Get involved. Good luck with that. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Welcome back to another episode of Watch Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the watch market and what I've got coming up and how my collection has gone values wise. This isn't my full collection, this is just some pieces I've been I've had out whilst filming uh, some bits and bobs from the episodes on my channel. But I thought it'd just be useful to touch base and give my thoughts on the watch market as a whole, what I've ordered going forward, what's landing very soon, and what I think is a good buy in this current climate. Now, it won't have escaped you all that watch prices have gone absolutely ballistic. In fact, alternative asset classes like watches, collectible cars, uh, wine, whatever it is, even, well, we won't touch on crypto, but prices have gone absolutely ballistic. And you will also probably know that inflation on the whole has gone pretty bonkers as well. RPI has gone up, but what I wanna do is just kind of run through my thought process, why I've bought so many watches, why I'm continuing to buy watches, where I think the market's gonna go, and whether or not I think the whole thing is a bubble. So, where to begin? We'll go back to the beginning of the pandemic, shall we? Because that's where the kind of madness really started. And beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people were coming out of watches, a lot of people were panicking, a lot of people were holding on to things, but thinking, I might drop them at any second. There was a lot of uncertainty. Around kind of March 2020, there was a lot of uncertainty on the market. And at that time, I made a conscious decision to go into buying mode. I was buying whatever I could that was collectible. I bought the Creo GT and I did buy some watches. I bought my FB Jean Elegante. I bought a load of bits and bobs, slightly off the cuff stuff and some slightly more kind of um, understandable items like the Creo GT. Because I thought things are gonna slow down, people are gonna panic, people are gonna be dropping things all over the place. The trajectory was doing that on all of these things anyway, and the pandemic just kind of cooled it all off, and a lot of people were getting out of things cheap. So I thought, why not get in the mix, buy some bits and bobs, and at the end of this pandemic thing, things are gonna go absolutely mental because of revenge spending and also government monetary policy, which is gonna be an absolute necessity off the back of this. This is as bad as it looks. Monetary policy being rates being dropped, which means people spend and then inflation and whatever, right? So basic kind of economic stuff, which I'm not gonna kind of bore on about. So I thought I'm just gonna buy all of the assets because I was just about old enough to remember 2008 when things all sort of um, went into the toilet. And a lot of people now that I've got lots of very very valuable things properties watches cars collectibles they were doing a lot of hoovering in 2008 the people that had money then they were doing a lot of hoovering and i also knew that kind of going throughout the pandemic what i did for a living was going to be relatively okay ish there was nothing there's no elements of what i did with fingers in pies that were going to be too badly impacted or so i hope so I thought I would probably be okay, I would have money, and I thought that buying stuff up would be a good idea. So anyway, I did all that. Uh, pandemic went on far longer than any of us ever imagined it probably would. Cut long story short, we're now coming out the other side of that. Whether you like it or not, that's pretty much, that's what's happening, and inflation, as predicted, has gone absolutely bonkers. The government dropped interest rates, which meant that people don't hold money in their bank account anymore because there's no real incentive to hold it in there. Uh, borrowing is cheap, so everyone's leveraging, everyone's buying things, uh, be it car finance, be it mortgages. Uh, they're buying the hell out of everything. Coupled with that, you've got things like 
Brexit, which has uh, pushed prices up and the, the things in the supply chain, which has caused inflation from that perspective. And you've also got uh, COVID, which has caused supply chain issues as well. So that starved supply and all these things have pumped prices up. The retail price index has absolutely shot up, but that has been largely due to things like energy prices. So inflation basically is running amok, but inflation I don't think necessarily is applying to the watch market. Inflation in the kind of the general terms, the RPI terms, I don't think inflation is applying to the watch market. I think the watch market and to a degree, the collectible car market, I think they're their own separate markets run on a very different set of uh, psyches and uh, investors, if you like, actually. A lot of people that are now in certain cars, in certain watches, they're not car and watch people. They're not really anyway. They're just people that are investing cash and they've been sucked in. Um, a lot of it is through revenge spending. A lot of it is them coming out of traditional uh, investing methods and wanting to put their cash into something that they understand a bit better, that's a little bit easy in, easy out, uh, and dare I say it, tax-free as well. If you buy them in the company, they're not tax-free, but if you buy them personally, they are tax-free, they go up. There's no capital gains on watches or uh, cards. Single-seater race cards are a different, different kettle of fish. So do I think the watch market's a bubble? Do I think it's just gonna go pop one of these days? Um, basic economics would probably dictate no. For a pop to happen, what you'd need is essentially nine times out of 10, a huge increase in supply or a huge decrease in demand. Supply, not really going anywhere. I don't think Patek is suddenly just gonna start pumping watches like no tomorrow. They're not gonna sort of suddenly triple their capacity. In actual fact, if I think they did, I think the demand will be there to probably just continue to hoover up all those watches. I don't think there'll be watches sat around um, any of the popular stuff anytime soon. So, so supply, don't think that's going anywhere. Um, particularly with what's happened with COVID and the backlogs in production and all that kind of jazz, absolutely not. And companies like Rolex coming out and saying, we're not upping supply. I just don't think supply is going to be a factor in that field. Uh, and particularly with the old discontinued uh, collectible stuff, like my 5065 uh, Aquanaut, they're not making them anymore. So supply, that's not gonna be a factor in any watch market pop. I don't think on most of the brands, okay? On most of the mainstream brands, your, your Patek, your APs, um, your Rolexes, I don't think supply is going to cause uh, a crash anytime soon. Demand, now this is the more controversial one. This is the one that people will have more opinions on. Will demand fall away at any point? I don't think it will. I think there's so many people now that have been hoovered into the watch market over the past two to three years that demand just isn't going anywhere. There are more people coming into the market every single day. A lot of those people have no interest in horology. They just wanna come into something at X and know that it's worth Y the next week. Whether or not they're selling them straight away, most people wanna just buy something that means they're worth more on paper the week later. And you can't blame people for that. It's headline news that watches have outperformed any traditional investment over the past 10 years. There was an article the other day that came out on it. Everyone knows now that watches are a good place to put money, right? And five years ago, it wasn't really seen like that. And that's why prices were less on the secondary for pretty much every single model. So I don't think demand's going anywhere. The only thing that might kick that in the nuts is the government's putting up interest rates. So interest rates are going to keep going up step by step over the coming months and years. In fact, we're due another rate rise. This is filmed late February. I think there'll be another rate rise at the end of the month. Incrementally, the governments are gonna put them up. And I don't know whether or not that's gonna have such a profound impact on people that they're not going to go and buy something that's seven, eight, 10 grand that they think they can make another 10 grand on. I don't think those raises are going to be so aggressive that it's going to put those people off and it's going to mean that they can't afford to go and then do that. Um, the watch market is predominantly cash-based as well. There isn't that much leveraging or, or funding in watches. Not that many people put their watches on finance. So again, I don't think governments paying up interest rates are going to have a huge effect on the watch market like it might do with the supercar market. You know, if your finance goes up 500 quid a month on a supercar, you might think twice about it. But if you're cash buying a watch for seven or eight grand, do you care whether or not the interest rates go up? Probably less so. so I don't think there's a huge amount of danger there as well. And I don't think there's a huge amount of danger in interest rates going up too high either because the government's borrowed so much money. There's so much borrowing that's gone on and things are on such a tight uh, edge at the moment. If they put them up too much, it could completely put the economy through the floor. So 
I think they've got to tread carefully governments with this and I think if there is a bit of inflation that's going on I think that's the lesser of all evils. Obviously another factor to, to build into why the demand has gone so mental on these things it's bounce back loans, it's government support on things and that was basically just quantitative easing, government just throwing cash at people, pouring money into the economy and again another contributor to inflation. So that again was why a lot of spending happened. People were bored, they weren't spending money on a load of holidays, uh, they were angry, <laughs> they were just pissed off at home um, and they just wanted to spend money on things that are right in front of them uh, and available to buy. And a lot of people actually sort of nerded up on watches over the pandemic. So. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it, there'll be a cooling in terms of it's not going to continue going stratospheric. It's at a point now, I look at my 5168G, my Patek Aquanaut, I almost look at it on a weekly basis and it's gone up 10, 20 grand a week, some weeks, and you just think, how is this sustainable? I don't think that is. I don't think that watch will continue uh, along with the rest of them going up 10 grand a week. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there will be um, a plateau point for a lot of these models, but. I think whilst we continue to see astronomical um, capital gain and across a lot of these assets, uh, I don't see any reason why it's just going to continue where it is. Supply and demand are going to be largely unaffected and I think the show is going to go on for the time being. Annoying for people that are into horology and actually just want to get pieces at retail price and just enjoy them, um, but for those that have hoarded watches over the years, um, like myself, just collectors, Great to know that your collection's worth more on paper than it was last week. Um, and you know, should the worst happen and, and I ever need money, I've got a load of stuff that I can liquidate, fantastic. Um, but it has kind of sucked the fun out of it to an extent, you know. It's less fun running around in a watch that you now know is worth 150K, um, that was worth 20, 30 grand at one point. And it's a pain to insure them as well. You have to ring the insurance company. You know, the, so it's not all fun and games. There are other sides to it. But um, yeah, that was a very waffling chat on some thoughts. I haven't scripted any of that. That was just my generic thoughts on the watch market. I'm really keen to hear what you think. So what have I got on order? What's coming? I have ordered a Chapek Ratchapante. Chapek's a brand that I absolutely love. Got one here, actually right here. Um, the Ratchapante that should have arrived by the time this video goes out and there'll be a video coming with that very soon. I think Chapek, an extraordinarily good brand to put money into. That watch was 40,000 pounds. They are regularly selling for 130 to 150,000 pounds on the secondary market. Uh, again, I'm not gonna sell it. I've spec'd it to my, um, my taste and my kind of specification. It's a watch I've been desperate for for over a year. So I'm not gonna sell it. Good to know there's 100 grand in there. Fantastic. Chapek Salmon. Same as this, but with a salmon dial and a couple of other little tweaks, which we'll go into a video when it arrives. And I've also got a Laurent Ferrier Sport Auto coming as well. Again, a watch ever since I bought my Grand Sport Tour Beyond uh, many moons ago. It's a watch I assume Laurent Ferrier will be making and I've earmarked and said to them, if you ever bring out a non tour Beyond sports model, I will have one. So that arrives very soon as well. And they are all with uh, ordered with Pietro from the limited edition. They are going to be great pieces in terms of um, increasing your net worth on paper. I think they're, gonna, they're completely oversubscribed. They're completely kind of like sold out and, and whatnot. There are far too many people want them compared to how many are being made and how many have been allocated. So um, very good from that perspective. And I think they're very interesting, very good value pieces of watchmaking as well. And just something a bit different. Uh, what else do I think is a good buy? I think 36 millimeter APs are a fantastic buy. I think you can pick up 36 millimeter two-tone Royal Oak um, on the secondary market on Chrono 24 for about 13 to 15,000 pounds on bracelet, two-tone, like Gerald Genters. I think for well under 20 grand, they're a fantastic piece of kit. This is obviously full gold. I bought this one recently for 17, I think. Um, it's got a gray dial on it, really rare reference actually. But I think 36 millimeter APs are a very good buy uh, if they haven't all evaporated off the secondary by the time this video goes out. Chaos! Who's that? Is that the sausage dog? Let's get started, yeah. Perfect. Good boy. Another thing I think is a really good idea to buy is the Ralph Lauren steer. Oh, no, I'm joking there. I like it, but you probably all, all laugh at me if I say that. Um, Tudors are a great buy still. Uh, the FXD. Uh, it's a really great watch. They're not watches that you buy to make money though. I don't think they're, you know, something that's ever going to be worth a huge amount of money. You don't buy a modern Tudor in order to make money. They're not investment pieces. You just buy them because you like them. I love them. Um, and yeah, I think they do slight overs on the secondary market, but 
just buy them if you like them. But I think an unsung hero of the Patek range, if you can get hold of one now, is the 5524G. The white gold Pilot is a great buy from Patek. It's extremely undervalued. I'd buy on the secondary market if you can, if they're still below list price, but I think that's a hell of a lot of watch. Um, they are fantastic as a watch, as a piece of kind of horology and something to wear, something that's nice. Um, I think it's good and I think the potential upside on that watch is big. If they start rumoring discontinuing them or limiting them, um, I do suspect that they will go a little bit potty. So those are my little top tips. Could be wrong, could be wrong, rarely am. So watch back on my old videos, I'm rarely wrong on this stuff, but um, there we go. Please do feel free to tell me I'm talking complete nonsense in the comments. Uh, you could well be right. But that's a little rundown of the market anyway. Thank you so much for sitting through this nonsense. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it, learnt something, or just realised that I'm a complete moron. I'll see you all very soon for more Watch Talk. There's loads of videos on the channel with loads of different watches, so make sure you go and check all of them out. Thank you very much, and before you go, make sure you click the link below for Grail Watch Club. There is a high-end timepiece to be won for a few quid, and I'll be handing over the piece personally to the winner very, very soon. Thank you guys. See you later. Bye.